and the aluminum made contact with the hull and put that gouge in there. I have had a lot of y'all ask me about using thickened gel coat as a filler instead of using like the Evercoat filler with gel coat over the top of it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use some thickened gel coat and uh, the thickener of choice typically is gonna be a colloidal silica. And West Marine makes a colloidal silica, that's their 406 colloidal silica and it's an adhesive filler. And we're gonna be mixing that with just some base white gel coat that I know is the correct hull color. You can use styrene to thin the gel coat if needed, but today we are thickening it. We're gonna be using some of the MEKP 925 as our catalyst or hardener. And uh, what you're gonna to wanna to do, I've already done it this morning to kind of save some time. I've actually went over the hull with a little bit of a hull cleaner to make sure we gotten any stain out of the boat. So if you can look here, you can see the hull is kind of discolored. There's a different coloration uh, from the hull stain from the water. I used a hull whitener. You can see it's much whiter here. That's back to the truer color. And I've already used a um, razor blade to kind of clean that a little bit, kind of abrade it. So Y'all can see that we've kind of bordered about a quarter of an inch or so around the parameter of the damage. And I'm gonna take some 36 grit sandpaper. Now you probably should be wearing some PPE. I would recommend a good mask with a resp or a respirator, but so that y'all can hear me today, I've got plenty of airflow through here. But if you're doing this at home, you always wanna be wearing rubber gloves. You always wanna be wearing some PPE and probably some protective eye gear. So what we're gonna do though, is you're just gonna be roughing this up. You're gonna be using this 36 grit to just take a little bit of those rough edges off of that damage. Now you can use power tools as well, but I'm just gonna do this with common hand tools and stuff that's readily available so you don't have to go out and buy any specialized equipment, something that's expensive. So that's the 36 grit that's kind of roughed up and softened those edges. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some 80 grit. Those are two very common grits. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna sand out a little bit further. We're gonna go right out kind of to the edge of the blue tape with the 80 grit going to soften those corners even a little bit more. What that's going to do is that's going to give you a real good transition from the damage out to the good material. And this border here is going to keep us from scratching areas that we don't want to scratch and will give us a good border when we're adding that filler. And if you have the luxury of having a compressor or a compressed air, now's a good time to blow that out a little bit. Blowing out that surface. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna re-tape this. I'm gonna pull off the, the blue that we put on there and I'm gonna move the border back just a little bit. It's kind of one of those things, y'all, there's not an exact science. There's not just one perfect way to do it. You just wanna be sure that you've got a good, clean surface and you wanna be sure that you're not damaging any gel coat out beyond the repair area. So I'm gonna re-tape this. I'm gonna move it out just a little bit further. I'm gonna border that where we're about, oh, anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters of an inch out away from the damaged material. All right. And I'm gonna take the 80 once again, and I'm just gonna real carefully kind of go out just a little bit further a little bit further trying not to damage the, the edges of the tape in the process and we are going to wipe it down i've got a blue cloth here it's already moistened with a little bit of acetone acetone is really good at cleaning and drying i'm going to pat that knock any dust down now I also have a heat gun here, which is handy. That's like an industrial hair dryer, if you will. It's gonna go over this. Now be careful, these things are crazy hot. They will, they will burn you. You're just gonna wanna warm this up a little bit. All right, so that should be our prep work for the most part is done. I've got some of this colloidal silica and this stuff, again, you should I would recommend wearing a mask if you're doing this because it does get airborne. But well, we got plenty of airflow through the shop right now. I'm just going to be super careful. 
And I'm gonna add a little bit of this. There's, again, there's no exact science. You want this gel coat to be thickened about like mayonnaise, I would say. You want it, you don't want it watery. You can see it thickening up. It's just getting much, much thicker. And I'm gonna mix this very, very thoroughly. Several minutes, in fact. It needs to be creamy. That is about the consistency right there, y'all. See that, it's not gonna run. It doesn't drip off of a stick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on a, uh, a little mixing board. That should be plenty to fill. So what I've done is I've mixed this real thoroughly in the cup. And then I'm gonna come back here on the mixing board and I'm gonna mix it some more because sometimes you will have little pockets of uh, the colloidal silica that has not broken down. It'll be these little puffs of powdery material and you don't want any of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that right there in the middle of the board and we'll make a little divot in there and we're gonna add, come on over here, Cat Logan, we're gonna add some catalyst. This is a Norox MEKP, that's methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, that's the 925. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit in the cap here. It's gonna take a few drops, but I find that you're more accurate if you pour a little catalyst in a cap. Just a few drops is all you're gonna need, maybe a couple more. That should be plenty. Generally about one to 2% on your catalyst is gonna be good. And then you wanna mix this really, really, really thoroughly. We have already taped and bordered this off. We've already sanded it. I'm gonna warm it up just a little bit with a heat gun. You don't need a whole bunch, but today we've got some rain moving through and kind of high humidity. So I just wanna be sure this is warm and dry before we apply it. And we're just gonna very carefully work that into that damaged area there. Want to push it in. Want to be sure that it's making good contact. I'm going to work it back and forth two or three times. Don't expect it to be perfect on the first pass. And you can see I'm kind of wiping it on there and then wiping it back off. That is to help it make a really nice bond. You can see there's going to be some little bubbles. See that? It's not going to be perfect. If you look in here, it's a little bit low on the fill but that is quite all right. Uh, what we're gonna do is after that is tacked off and cured a little bit, we're gonna come back in here with some gel coat that has not been thickened with the colloidal silica and I'm gonna add a little modifier C to that and that is gonna be our finished coat. We've got that kind of filled, but slightly on the low side. We've got it bordered with some additional tape. We've been letting this cure for some time now. Generally, you're gonna wanna let it maybe cure overnight or at least half the day. You want it to be tacked off and fairly firm. And what we've got here is some gel coat that is uh, matched to the whole color, but is not thickened. So it's just your standard gel coat. And we're gonna be adding some Modifier C sanding solution to that. So that's gonna keep that, it's gonna form a film on the surface so that the uh, gel coat can cure properly. And what I'm gonna do is add a cap full we're not getting super technical here, but we're adding about a capful of the modifier C to the gel coat. And once again, that's a sanding aid or additive that's gonna be available. Now, sometimes you can get gel coat that has got sanding aid added to it or wax. Generally, I prefer to get gel coat that does not have the wax in it and then add it as needed. So like on our thickened gel coat that we used with the colloidal silica, we did not have any wax in that, it's very important. But then on the finish layer, the top layer, we're gonna want some wax because uh, Joe Coat is what's called air inhibited. It actually needs a film. You can use sometimes even wax paper. Matter of fact, I've got some right here, but just standard wax paper can sometimes be used as a film or a barrier to go over it. If you don't have any of the modifier C, the wax solution. And so we're gonna mix this real thoroughly. You're gonna probably spend about a minute or so and mix this till it is thoroughly integrated and then what i'm going to do is actually apply a little bit of this to our mixing board that's going to be plenty for what we're doing there again we've got the norox the mek 925 
and I'm going to add several drips or drops. Again, we need about about 2%, so it's going to be several drops. I'm not getting super technical here. And we're going to thoroughly mix this on the mixing board. And I'm just going to use a blade to apply this just real carefully. You can see why we bordered around the edge of this. We don't want to get gel coat in a lot of places that it's not needed. So what I'm going to do is just apply that over the whole area and then we're going to come back and just just really really lightly smooth it out. It takes a, just a, a light touch. Now I've had a lot of practice doing this. I'm going to kind of clean up around the edges a little bit. What you got here with the Unthickened gel coat is a more pure fill. You have less chance of little bubbles and porosity. That's looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that cure overnight. And tomorrow we're actually gonna put another coat on there. Sometimes it takes two or three fills. So we made that fill. I've actually removed all the masking tape there. And uh, this is like the second coat in there. So we filled this up and you can see, come in there pretty tight, you can see there's a, a boundary. You can see the original gel coat and then there's a bit of an edge. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some blue shop towel, wet with some acetone, and I'm just gonna kind of soften that edge. Sometimes you can just go right up to it. Just like that, y'all. Just kind of blended it a little bit. Just kind of blend it a little bit. That'll kind of make it feather and transition a little bit easier. I've overfilled it a bit, but we just used a blue cloth to kind of soften that hard corner. We're gonna let that cure a little while longer, and we're gonna come back with a razor blade and start knocking some of that down.